Hi, my name is Steve James. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast. This is episode number 417, Love According to the Word. I was thinking about this season of giving and how people are looking for happiness, their desires, their goals, and how they would like to have the joy in their lives that everybody talks about in this season. I thought about the love of God. But to understand the love of God, you have to look at love according to the Word of God. That's what this teaching is all about. Take your Bibles and go to 1 John chapter 4. You know, I was thinking about the season that we're in right now, or the Christmas season, they call it. I mean, you can't go anywhere without hearing about it. You can't uh, turn on anything that has sound, like a TV (laughs) or a radio or anything without hearing about it. People are, they're more blessed and kind than normal. You just, it's just out there and you hear about it. And I thought that I would like to teach today on the love of God. And as I was reading and working it, I thought, you know, what I really want to do is I want to teach about love according to the word, not according to the world, but according to the word. It's a lot different. It's not a little different. It's a, it's a lot different according to the, the word. And in verse John 4 and verse 1 is where I want to go. And I found this very interesting. We're going to look at different sections in God's word about the love of God and what it is. I also noticed at the same time the word of God is is talking and sharing about the love of God. It also says to watch out. You'll see what I mean. Chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And that word, you know, try or to prove, you know, test. You do that with the word of God, with the word of God. Hereby we know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And when it says spirit, it means what the spirit really produces or says. You hear people say things, and if they say something contrary to the word, it's contrary to the word. It's not the love of God. But every spirit or every thought, every conclusion that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is not of God. This is that of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who's in us? Well, it's it's God in Christ in us. Holy Spirit is greater than what's in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. See, there is a spirit or thoughts that are of that are truth, what the spirit produces, right? And the spirit of error. There's error out there. It's just interesting 
the world has its idea of love. It has its idea of what's kind, what joy is. If you watch many of the movies that come out around this time, well, joy is finding that significant other. That's it. Matter of fact, so many of these movies and stuff, that's what it's all about. We got to be able to tell the difference. And then in First John here is this whole section about love. I find that interesting. They were told to watch out. Watch out. Try the spirits. And verse 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. What a statement. So this is what the love of God is. It's to know God. And if we know God, then we know what love is. I can tell you one thing that love is. Love is always giving. God so loved the world that he what? Gave. Gave. See that? It's always given. Lots of times in the world, love means, oh, well, I've got to get it. I don't know why I'm being shunned. I don't know why no one cares for me. Why can't I find the love like everyone else in the movie has but me? <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's not it. It's in giving. It's in giving. I'd like you to keep your finger here, but I want to go to another section. I want to go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And this is the same thing. There's a section here in chapter 5 that's about the love of God. And it shares the love of God. But before it gets into it, it says, Stand fast in verse 1. Therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye have fallen from grace. We don't want to fall from grace. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by believing. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but believing which is energized by love. Agape love is the word, it's the word agape, and that's what it is energized. It worketh is energized by love. It says, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Who hindered you that ye should not obey the truth? Someone hinders us. Those who would teach another way, another spiritual thought, false prophets, that's who hinders us. When we accept false doctrine, that's why when it comes to the love of God, we have to do it according to the word. That's what the love of God really is. And I want to jump down to verse 12. It says, because it talks a little bit about these people that do that. And in verse 12, it says, I would, they were even cut off, which trouble you, which bring in another, you know, another doctrine, another way of looking things. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Liberty, another way of looking at liberty is an uncontaminated way of living. Only use not liberty 
for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Remember I said something about all love is given? We're to serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We're to love our neighbor as ourselves. Nobody ever really hates themselves. You know what I mean? Whatever we would like, we want to love our neighbor that way. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. To walk in the spirit is to walk according to the word. See, when we're born again, we receive Holy Spirit. And in Romans, it says that Holy Spirit floods our heart. It floods our heart with love. So now we have the ability to love. We can just love that way. Verse 17 says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another so that ye cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led by the Spirit, and that means by the Word of God, that's how you know if it's truth or not. You are not under the law. That's the key to walking in love, is to put on the Word and act like the Word says we're to act. And it's different than what the world puts forth. One of the things you can do is you can see the world produces and go, well, we know it's not that. It is not that. And then it gets into all the works of the world. And they're just this big list that is terrible, terrible list that we don't want to be a part of. Let's go back to First John. And we're going to go to chapter 4, and we're going to start in verse 6 here. I did find it interesting that all these things you do with love is in contrast to watching out for the evil. And here in verse 6, I read this already, but it says, We are of God, and he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. That is one of the things that the love of God is, that we love one another. For God is of love, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Now, when you see some things in the world that portray love, they come short of the love that a love of God. They come quite a bit short of it. Most of that love is very selfish, very selfish. People would say, I love you. I would say that to my honey. I love you, right? You know what they need to hear back? I love you. I love you too. And if you don't, well, you're not satisfied with that. Hey, I'm loving you and you don't love me. You get hurt. You're hurt by it. In the world, you're hurt about it. And that's why they have these big, long movies, <laughs> putting it all together so that everyone can feel good about it. But... When you love with the love of God, you give it, right? God fills you. You give it, God fills you. You can never give too much because God will fill you. Floods our hearts. Verse 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. 
In this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. See, God gave. Mm -hmm. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son into the world. He sent his son to be a propitiation of our sins, for our sins, our sins are forgiven. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, in he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. That spirit is Holy Spirit. It floods our heart with love. And when it comes to thoughts and the message of love, we have to go to the word of God to see what it is. Verse 14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Once again, given. God made a way for the, everybody in the world to be saved. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed that love that God hath towards us, to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. That's the true love. That's the true love. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness, in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. We're just like Jesus Christ in the world. And we can show people what love is really like. We could go up to somebody and say, would you like to meet the greatest lover that ever lived? <laughs> And we could introduce them to him, which is Jesus Christ. And when we walk like Jesus Christ, we are also the greatest lovers that ever lived, just like Jesus Christ. Because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love cast out fear. If there's a place in our lives where we still have some fear, well, the way to cast it out is to love more in that area. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and he hates his brother, he's a liar. That's pretty, pretty clear, pretty frank. It says that we pray for our enemy. We pray for those that spitefully use us. You know what I mean? And here's a brother, meaning someone who's born again. We love him. And if you don't, Love him. It says, well, you know, you're not measuring up. You're a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment, it's a singular commandment, have we from him that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. See, pretty good. That's who we're to love, our brother also. If they measure up to our, what we think they should do or not, if they measure up to God or not, 
it we might be the only love they get to feel and see. Chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. In other words, if you love God, you're going to love Jesus Christ. Yeah. If you love Jesus Christ, you're going to love God. By this, we know that we love the children of God. And when we love God and keep his commandments, now there's an S there, commandments. For this is the love of God. Okay, now we're going to learn what the love of God is. You guys ready? For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments with an S at the end. And his commandments are not grievous. So, what are the commandments of God? Let's go back one page to chapter 3, verse 18, is where I like to start. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue but in deed and in truth, the truth of the word of God. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemneth us, God is greater than our heart. So if our heart condemneth us, we feel like we've come short. God is greater than our hearts and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemneth us not, then have we confidence in God. Once we believe that Jesus Christ accomplished all the works for us, if we believe that we have the grace of God in our lives, when we believe that our sins have been forgiven, when we believe that Jesus Christ did the, all the work that is needed, then we have confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments, another S, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Verse 23, and now we're going to see exactly what the love of God is, okay? And this is his commandment. It's a singular commandment, right? That we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and, and is a conjunction, it's the first commandment was that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and commandment number two, love one another as he gave us commandment. One commandment plus one commandment equals two, and two is plural. That's why the S is there. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Mm -hmm. We got the Spirit, mm -hmm. and then it, we. this is where I started yeah. the teaching, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Some spirits may have other ideas, mm -hmm. another another funnel to God, which is nothing but a false funnel done by false brethren who come in to deceive. But try or prove or test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out unto the world. So we just always bring everything back to the word that's the trying of the spirits 
Let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, where we left off when I went back. It says, and this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. From what we've read, his commandments are to believe in the name of Jesus Christ and to love one another. So what's our responsibility is to love one another. I could take you into the Gospel of John, chapter 14 and 16, and show you where Jesus gave those commandments. Where Jesus Christ said, a new commandment I give unto you. You used to have, you know, the 10 and a few others. <laughs> he says, a new one I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. When you see how Jesus Christ loved, that's how we are to love. Verse 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our believing. Even our believing. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. That's who overcomes the world. So I found it interesting as I was thinking about the love of God and that's the best thing we could give people. That's the best way we could act towards each other. And I found it interesting that in both those uh, sections, there's a little warning. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless word.